From extreme bloodshed to flesh-eating ghouls and zombies, George A. Romero is truly the grandfather of modern horror, inspiring thousands of modern directors to not only experiment with graphic violence, the destruction of humanity, and various other codes and conventions, such as light, film style, camera shots, and claustrophobic settings to create a real sense of terror within their audiences, but to also use the genre of horror to reflect the flaws within human nature reflect our inability to achieve harmony and balance because of our inherent imperfections, emphasizing there will always be some form of discourse taking place due to the original sins within all of us. Greed, envy, pride, cowardice. However, it is not as if Romero was introducing people to the concept of violence and the disintegration of society on their screen, merely exploring these emerging ideologies further. The rise of technology and televisions in the 1960s greatly influenced the political and social zeitgeist of the US, as it brought visuals of the horrifying truth of segregation in the South, demonstrations from various liberation movements, the Vietnam War, and police brutality into the living rooms of America. This period of instability and social upheaval was a major point of inspiration for Ramiro that's clearly reflected in the common genre convention he uses, the inability for a group of people to come together. In the 1968 feature film Night of the Living Dead, all of the characters become stuck within one farmhouse and in order to survive through the night and overcome the ghouls, they must work together. However, they are all unable to do so, arguing over small petty things such as who's staying where. You going down there with him? Well, yes or no, this is your last chance, no beating around the bush. Should they fight or hide out in the basement? But the cellar is the strongest place. The cellar is a death trap. And we have everything we need up here. We can take all that stuff downstairs. Who is in charge of the group? If you get the hell down in the cellar, you can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. This divide and petty fighting, instead of ultimately focusing on the bigger issue, results in everyone's death. This is also a clear narrative convention used in the Misfits 1999 music video screen, also directed by Ramiro. As people begin transforming into zombies in the hospital, mass chaos follows, in which people are running everywhere to try and escape, often leaving others behind to save themselves. This can be seen in one scene in which a zombie comes to life on one of the stretchers. The nurse jumps and runs away, leaving the other nurse to fend for herself. In another sequence, a nurse leaves a patient on the stretcher in the middle of the hallway when the disaster occurs, sprinting away. This failure to work harmoniously is a clear commentary on the social and political zeitgeist of the 60s. Due to the government overlooking many liberation groups and demonstrators calls for change, Many fragments within those liberation groups began to form, as seen in second wave feminism as an example. 1960 is when the second wave of feminism began, with women demanding for equal rights within all sectors of life, rather than just suffrage like first wave feminism. The key areas for equal rights included sexuality, maternity leave, pay and jobs. However, the struggle to be seen and heard left many people fractured on what they should be fighting for reproductive rights, equal pay and jobs, all women or only heterosexual cisgendered white women. This inability to work together to achieve liberation for all women only made it harder for everyone within that movement to achieve success, something third wave feminism now endeavours to address through the concept of intersectionality. Ramiro attempts to reflect this within his media products, stressing the idea that without unity we can never achieve the bigger goal. Through Night of the Living Dead, the flaws within each character are clearly displayed, leading to a very common cause and effect plot in Ramiro's films. The characters often make the wrong choices due to their flaws, jealousy, wrath, impulsiveness, resulting in a negative consequence. These human flaws are the ones that stand in the way of the group succeeding and lead to the group's demise. One of the most obvious examples being Harry Cooper a character who was later discovered to be hiding out in the basement of the farmhouse with his wife and daughter. When the group is arguing whether or not they should hide out in the basement or fight off and protect the house altogether from the top level, Harry acts very cowardly. I'm not going to take that kind of a chance when we got a safe place. We luck into a safe place and you're telling us we got to risk our lives just because somebody might need help, huh? Telling the group they should all hide out in the basement and wait for help. He is quick to get upset when everyone does not immediately jump at his idea only furthering the argument between the group. 
You bastards. His bitter and rash behaviour can be further seen when he locks Ben out of the house and later when he turns the rifle on Ben while a mass of ghouls attempts to break into the farmhouse. You want to stay up here now? Harry's cowardice and jealousy of Ben's clear leadership position in the group clouds his judgement causing him to make the wrong choices. Ending in his death due to his need, his human desire for dominance and authority over others. Demonstrating, Ramiro condemns those within his films who do not strive to work past their selfishness and imperfections in order to unite for the benefit of all. Mr. Cooper, we'd all be a lot better off if all three of us were working together. This ideology of coming together and uniting as one is another common convention seen in many of Ramiro's products. Attempting to reflect how America was growing socially, culturally and politically more progressive in the 1960s with the fight for liberation of women and African American people. Many earlier horror films such as the 1966 The Witches and the 1965 Curse of Simba included representations of women and African American people, however they were very harmful, with black people falling into the racist tropes of the villains often the first to die and the mythical beings, and women falling into the damsel in distress convention. However, change was beginning within the media industry, especially regarding the representation of black people. For example, in 1964, Sidney Porter was the first black person to win an Academy Award for Best Actor for his lead role in the 1963 Lilies of a Field. This is why Night of the Living Dead was a significant film for its time period regarding representation of African Americans, as Ramiro wanted to reflect the changes occurring. The lead protagonist, Ben, who was able to survive the main antagonist, the ghouls, till the very next day was played by Dwayne Jones, an African American man. Demonstrating how Ramiro did not follow the typical narrative conventions of horror films at the time, reflecting the more progressive views on civil rights and black liberation rapidly emerging within the US. Throughout the film, Ben remains the most level-headed and attempts to help everyone, saving Barbara from a ghoul attack and risking his life countless times to save the group, creating a strong, smart and courageous representation of black people. This was a point of controversy in the film when it was first released in 1968. Some theaters down in the States and in the drive-ins wouldn't book this they because wouldn't. of, uh, just because of the, the color of the hero's skin. However, the main controversy within the film was due to the ending. Despite being the main hero of the film who survives the living dead, making it to the very next day, Ben's final demise ends up being the police and law enforcers who mistake him for a ghoul and shoot him dead. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. This was very significant during that zeitgeist in the US, as segregation laws still existed in some southern states. The civil rights movement was at its height, and prior to the release of the film on the 1st of October 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. had been assassinated on April 4th, 1968, leading to a spike in riots and social uproar. Therefore, many people saw the film to be a political statement addressing the mistreatment of black people in the US by the police, suggesting how the police don't protect black people, but rather uphold the systemic racism that oppresses black people and still does today for that matter. Although Ramiro said he did not intend for this message, in an interview for TIFF Learning, he stated, To us, it wasn't a racial message at all. Ben's death at the end of the film was merely supposed to reflect the devastation brought to people's homes by their television in the 1960s. Such as in 1968, the Vietnam War was the first war ever televised, filling people's screens with the horrifying events that took place. The film aimed to reflect the dismal atmosphere created by the news program seen in real life by ending the film on a darker note. However, Night of the Living Dead did create a social commentary on the civil rights movement and zeitgeist of the 1960s USA, despite the fact it was not the film's intention. So from then on, seeing the significance of this, Ramiro created African American lead roles throughout many of his later films as he stated, oh, if, the, if I can do this little bit to help, uh, great. With reference to the poor representation of black people within media, especially in horror films. In addition to stronger representation of African American people, another convention that can be seen across Ramiro's products is strong representation of women. They are often not the main victims and exhibit characteristics of wit, courage and strength, and are sometimes within male-dominated roles. 
As mentioned previously, the second wave of feminism began in the 60s, with women demanding equality in all factors of life, so it is no wonder why Ramiro has attempted to create positive representations of women in films, reflecting not only the progress made for women's rights, but also representing them as developed characters who share the same importance in narratives as the male characters. However, different media products often limit Ramiro's ability to explore the nuances of a character, such as in Scream. The main protagonist, who is able to outrun and last to the end, is a woman. While she does not fall into the damsel in distress convention as she attempts to sneak out and fight off the zombies, she very easily falls into the final girl trope. A blonde white woman escaping the zombies by pure luck and running around aimlessly attempting to find a way out. Rather than creating and exploring a developed character, Ramiro sticks to the conventional final girl horror trope in order to fit the conventions of a music video and the aesthetic of the band. However, Ramiro does use the horror convention of excessive gore and carnage within the music video, a very well-known trademark of his directing. At the beginning of the music video, scenes capture close-ups and medium shots of the people who rush into the hospital with giant bleeding wounds. As they turn into zombies, many scenes show them attacking the hospital staff, close-ups of the zombies biting the nurses and doctors, leaving massive wounds and spurting blood. As mentioned previously, the rise in popularity of televisions in America allowed for more and more people to be receiving visuals of the terrible events and state of unrest within their country as well as others. So it is no wonder Ramiro attempted to push the envelope on gore and horror to truly define the frightening genre that is horror today in order to reflect the increased violence seen on television in the 60s. Prior to the release of Night of the Living Dead in 1968, earlier horror films were still within the adventure genre, typically watched by children and given matinee showing times in theatre. This can probably be half credited to the awful outfits and clunky editing. Night of the Living Dead was a film to pave the way for terrifying and graphic horror films due to the codes used to create a sense of realism for the first time in this genre. Using overly excessive gore and bloodshed through the use of mise-en-scene, as well as camera techniques to create a cinema verite style film. Because Ramiro's realistic and extreme gore style of horror was the first of its kind, it created an entirely new subgenre for horror, spider film, which has inspired many modern horror films. One of the sequences in Night of the Living Dead that best shows this is after Tom and Judy burn alive in the vehicle. The ghouls begin to eat their different organs and body parts. A long sequence of various full shots and close-ups depict the ghouls eating the organs and body parts, with diegetic sounds of the ghouls whimpering, growling, and devouring Tom and Judy, constructing quite a disturbing scene. <laughs> leaving many viewers squeamish and frightened due to the realism. Additionally, the non-diegetic sound also adds to the distressing sequence as deep bass with reverb mimics the sound of a heartbeat, creating a very ominous feel and attempts to evoke feelings of anxiety within the audience. Ultimately, Ramiro is greatly inspired by the zeitgeist of the 60s in the USA. Although it was a period of social, cultural and political instability and chaos, it also demonstrated how people can come together to achieve a greater good. Overall, suggesting we can work together as one and progress forwards within society, however, we must first strive to overcome our own selfish human desires, keeping us from doing so, as together is how we will survive.